Sup guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 realistic ways that you can start saving more money faster. These are gonna vary from different free apps that you can download to mindset tricks that you can play with yourself. And I can guarantee you that if you just take on a couple of these, you are gonna be on your way to saving a lot more money. So if that is something you are interested in, hit that like button down below. Let's not waste any time, let's get into it. Number one, use an automatic savings app. Using an app like Plum or Moneybox, which are completely free by the way is a fantastic way to start saving more money without actually even thinking about it and the way they work is actually really simple all you need to do is connect your dedicated bank to the app and whenever you spend any money using that card what is going to happen is they are going to round up your purchases and save or invest the rest for example if you were to go out and buy a coffee and it was going to cost you one pound sixty what would actually happen is one of these apps and by the way the one that I probably recommend is plum what it will actually do is charge your card two pounds and it will take that additional 40 pence and like I said save or invest it for you if you did want to check out plum or Moneybox, I will leave links to both of them in the description down below and like I said they are completely free number two share subscriptions with friends or a family member this one right here guys is one of the easiest ways to save an absolute minimum of 60 pounds every year if you are a member of let's say Netflix Disney Plus now TV Amazon Prime Video, um, I'm sure there's other ones as well. What most of these allow is multiple users to actually use the app at the same time. So what you could potentially do is reach out to a friend or family member and ask to share a subscription. Obviously, this is going to half the cost every single year and it's just an instant way to start saving more money number three save your savings so this one is more of a mental shift that you're going to have to take on but boy does it work and basically all i mean by saving your savings is let's say you are um, sitting at home and you want to go out and spend let's say 60 pounds on a meal but you decide against it and you decide to cook a meal that would cost 10 pounds at home saving you 50 pounds now the key thing to do here is make sure you save that 50 pounds so that you can see some of the hard work that you have actually, or the sacrifices that you have put in to actually save that money. Most people will just do the saving part, which is absolutely fantastic, but then what will actually happen is they won't actually save that remaining difference, and maybe towards the end of the month when they see that they've got a lot more money in their bank account, they may take their foot off the gas pedal a little bit and spend a little bit more loosely. Now, if you are saving throughout the month, like I said, saving your savings, Savings, this is going to allow you to build a better relationship with your money and you will end up saving a lot more money as well number four annual purchases over monthly purchases if you know you're going to be using that service for the year so with me I actually have a load of different services that I use every single month that I know I'm going to be using for the next two or three years at least what I actually decide to do is take advantage of some of the annual membership offers because most companies offer a discount if you were to pay for the year up front um, and this actually saves me a lot more money in the long run. Yes, it's going to take out a little bit more money at the start, but with some companies, you can actually save up to 20% off if you do pay up front. Now, there is a couple of clauses to this. Obviously, if you do not have the money to pay up front, then it's more than fine for you just to go monthly. And the other thing is, if you are not planning to use it for the year, then of course, go monthly as well. But for me, if I'm using it for the year and I just decide to pay monthly and I have the money in my bank, it's only gonna cost me more over the year if I was just to pay it every single month. Number five is to use an app called Honey. And if you are shopping online, then you 100% should be downloading and using Honey as an app. Now, if you didn't know what Honey is, it's a completely free Chrome extension, a mobile app that you can install onto your Chrome browser, iPhone or Android devices. And basically what happens is when you are browsing your favorite stores that you're shopping at, when you get to the checkout of that store, what Honey Honey is going to do is automatically look through the entire internet for the best discount code for that store. Now, if you're like me, when you get to that checkout, you just want to get it paid for, and most of the time, you forget to go and look for discount codes, because most of the time, the ones that you find are gonna be invalid. Honey does all of this for you in literally 10 seconds, and there's been multiple purchases that I've made this year where I've saved up to 50 pounds on a single purchase just through using the Honey tool. It's completely free. There is no affiliates or anything like that. I'll leave a link in the description so you can grab 
grab it. But if you are shopping online, everybody that is shopping online, that is, should be using Honey. Number six is to start learning to do more things yourself. Now, what do I mean by this? Basically, most of the jobs that we get people to come in and do, we can realistically probably go and do a Google or YouTube search and get a good idea on how to actually do that. We just decide not to do it because we're naturally going to be lazy and we have more confidence in an expert. However, if you are looking to save more money, you'll be surprised on the amount of things that you can actually learn to do yourself. And I have a perfect example for you. Now, I was looking to get artificial turf installed into the back garden at my house here, and I was looking at quotes online and I was seeing things for £3,000, £4,000. But realistically, all I decided to do was actually use the world's information hub, and that is YouTube. And it turned out that it wasn't as hard as what I thought it was going to do. I just followed a step-by-step -step guide. It did end up costing me about £1,300 because I had to get the, all the materials myself and things like that. But realistically, I saved a third on what I was going to pay an expert just by doing it myself. And there's so many different things that you can Google that you can actually do yourself. There's things like painting, maybe fixing um, a leak. Maybe you could Google that and, and work out how or where the problem is coming from. All I'm trying to say is before you jump the gun and pay over the odds for an expert to come in, try and Google it and see if you can actually solve that problem yourself first, you'll end up saving a lot more money. Number seven, use a cashback website. Now, just like Honey, this is something that once again, if you are shopping online, you should certainly be using every single time. And basically the way that cashback services work, once again, they are a completely free service to sign up to. But when you decide to go and buy a product from your favorite online store, what you actually do is navigate to that site via a cashback website one of my top recommendations is top cashback and quidco and what will actually happen if you were to direct yourself to your favorite website via the cashback website when you actually make your purchase you can get like one percent two percent back on your actual purchases in the form of cash. Now I know that most of these will only offer a small percentage and if you're maybe just spending 50 pounds and 1% on 50 is not going to be that much. Over the course of the year, if you are doing all of your shopping online, which most of us are doing right now anyway, it really can build up. As always, I will leave a link to Top Cashback and Quid Code down in the description down below. Once again, they are completely free to sign up. There are no hidden fees or anything like that everybody that shops online should be using a cashback website. Number eight is going to be sleep on your impulse purchases. This one here is actually one of my secret hacks to saving money. And I'm just like everyone else. I'm no sane. In the past, I have wasted thousands of pounds on impulse purchases where I've been desperate to buy something and I decided to get it that night to only realize a couple of months later I never used it anymore. Now, a simple little hack that I've been doing in the past couple of years is when I feel that urge to go impulse shopping now, of course, this doesn't count for essential shopping. This is more for those non-essential items. But basically what I do is I decide to sleep on it for a couple of days. And if by maybe two or three days down the line, I still feel the absolute urge to go and purchase the item, then maybe I can go ahead and purchase it. But most of the time, because it's an impulse purchase, a couple of days down the line, I'm not interested anymore. So one thing that I recommend everyone does is if you are looking to buy something that is not essential, always sleep on it first and see if you have the same feeling the next day. Number nine, unsubscribe from email lists. Unsubscribing from an email list is gonna save you so much money without you even thinking about it. Because let's put it this way, how many times have you had an email from a store where they are saying that they are doing a massive sale and you have the FOMO? You are scared of missing out on that sale. You love the brand and you are just going to be going to that website and purchasing it just because they have a sale on. Once again, are you really shopping because you need something from there or are you just shopping because you are scared of missing out? Like I said, the best way to fix this is to unsubscribe from their email list and you will never ever see that sale in the future. Really, really simple one here, but so, so effective. Number 10, instead of looking at the cost, put a time cost to everything non-essential that you buy. Once again, this is going to really help you decide whether a purchase is going to be essential 
essential for you or not. And basically what I mean by this, let's say you are going to buy an electric uh, treadmill for £2,000, right? And let's say your hourly wage is £20 an hour. That is, of course, going to cost you 100 hours to actually be able to afford that treadmill. Now, what you can then do is actually look at yourself and think, is it really worth 100 hours of my hard-earned working time so that I can have a treadmill? Maybe I could go just running for free or something like that, but that's not the point here. All I'm trying to say is if you put a time against your purchases in terms of how long you are going to have to work to be able to pay that back, it's really going to help you make much better decisions when it comes to those non-essential purchases. So there you go, guys. There are 10 quick and easy ways that you can start saving a lot more money faster. Just like I said at the start of the video, even if you just take on a couple of these and make some small changes, I can almost guarantee you that you will start saving more money in the future. I hope you liked this video. Leave it a like down below if you did. Leave us a comment as well if you're feeling extra fruity and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.